right, this is Jeff again here at 1335 East Main Street. We are now in front of the main house. So as you stand looking at this house from the from the street, that that uh, shop line, it goes out the back of the shop, wraps around the left side of this house and starts to cut across the property moving towards the driveway. It looks like just based on where the clean outs are at in here, that the line, uh, it turns, I believe, before getting under the driveway, but it kind of angles that direction. Oh, there we go. All right, here's where the Y connection comes into the line here. It looks like from the, uh, that would appear to be the line where the line from the uh, shop comes from. Instead of locate there. So where we are current, we're gonna have to move to this other clean out. We go through these dang turns here right before we get to this point that are just pinching my camera and stopping them up. Where we're stopping right here though is right where the second uh, clean out is for the, for the main house. In total, I think that's like the, gonna be the fourth clean out in total we go through. But um, anyway, if you look from the house out towards the street, about 100 feet out, you'll see where that clean out's at and that's where we're stopping right now, so. We're gonna let this drain off here for a moment and then we'll continue onward from that other access point there. All right, looks like we're just about done draining off here. We're gonna start pulling back in. Almost looks like the line may switch over to concrete pipe there. We'll get a nicer view of that when we drop into that other clean out. You do have a little bit of an offset there at that joint. Um, we'll take another look at that as we as we go into there. But it's it's not a terribly significant offset. Um, it's also a hundred feet from the main house. When you start getting that far from your home, uh, you you need some fairly significant issues going on in order to create a blockage and a backup bad enough to back up that much piping without the water weight, the head pressure busting things loose long before it gets there. So it's one thing when you have a you know one two inch offset joint. It's another thing when you've got a quarter to a half of an inch. At that at, at levels like that, you know it, it basically comes down to whether or not you're putting improper stuff down your line, and quite a bit of it at that. Wadding up flushable wipes, junk like that, is is about the only way you can ever get something that small to accrue enough debris that you can withstand that that kind of head pressure. Filling up a hundred feet of four inch pipe with water is it's a lot of pressure. Toilet paper, stuff like that. I mean, obviously it disintegrates on its own, but it just, there's not a lot of stuff that can withstand that kind of pressure that's of the proper item nature. I should put it that way. And this piece of pipe here was graded very nicely. There's, I mean, essentially zero standing water in it. Whoever did the install on this did a very nice job. I mean, I, you know, it's not an absolutely perfect sewer line. Don't get me wrong, and very few lines are, but when you have lines this length, um, installing stuff to this level, is it's not a, it's not an easy thing to do. So we're real quick here, we're just going backwards until we uh, 
hit the vertical stack or the base of the toilet. This is cast iron pipe. My camera does not want to round this bend terribly well. And right there is where it starts, looks like it starts to. I think we're running into the base of the toilet here. This set of turns my camera's not loving, but right there you can see white porcelain ahead. So we just went back and it looks like we're right underneath either the toilet or the shower pan that's at the front of the house here. And that's that's nice looking cast iron there. That's held up very nicely. Very almost no scale build up to speak of. Anyway, going back into the house and out there to about 100 feet, nice looking sewer line. final clean out. There's the main house we're looking at right there. And there's the street. Clean some cobwebs off my camera lens here really quick and then we'll be on our way. <laughs> does look like the line makes a transition here and so this is where my camera originally we just stopped there a moment ago it was really not even the lip on that joint that stopped me it, it's just the getting out a hundred feet and hitting back-to-back -back turns like that will, will stop you about every time get out, out here all the way a little bit of standing water there got that far out there 70 feet almost this main lateral it looks like it's on the I don't even know if it's under the roadway out here I think it might be underneath the uh, potentially the right of way on the other side of the street my camera oh there we go I think we got it That there is the main lateral. Alrighty. Normally at this point here I'd locate um, my camera is at such a wonky angle right now. And when you couple that with the depth the thing is at, there, my locate will come in very skewed. I noticed right before the line dove Look like we had some roots punching through it. Yeah, you got roots coming through there. As they sit right now, I mean, especially when you consider the distance this is from the home, they're not affecting functionality. That doesn't mean that can't change, though. Well, I'm trying to play Frogger out there with crazy amounts of traffic. I, it's just not a situation where I can go out there and safely, easily locate. I was able to put a rough X marking down about where that's at before I had to run across the road. And that is actually still under the roadway there. It's deceiving from this angle. It looks like 75 feet would put you all the way on the other side of the road. Where that main is at is right up against the outside lane line for the uh, opposite side lane of traffic. You'll see an X marking out. It, it's a rough marking. I, I had to do that very quickly. 
So you've got some roots there. I mean, as far as flow and functionality goes, not doing much to affect functionality. In fact, the standing water in the line here, as it sits, would cause more flow issues than that the, the little roots there would. My concern when you get concrete pipe that settles like this, concrete pipe, the joints are, generally speaking, they are grouted. It's another type of concrete. It's not terribly flexible, as you can imagine. Um, concrete pipe can only settle so much um, before that grout just cracks and it opens up and the joints open up to the ground. And or what ends up happening is over time the grout itself wears out, which then allows the joints to get exposed to the ground and then slowly but surely groundwater uh, and dirt can start seeping through the pipe joints and it can lead to hydro erosion that erodes the support out underneath the line and cause the line to settle. So it's, it's, you know, at this point it's hard to know which caused it. Uh, but generally speaking, when your line settles to that extent, um, you know, generally speaking, the joints are going to be exposed to the ground to some extent. And the concern is, is it, it, you know, one, it can cause the line to progressively settle and get worse. You know, you can go from a belly to a belly with offset joints. Um, the other issue too that you can run into, and it's it's not always a guarantee that it happens. It somewhat depends on how the line is bedded. If it's bedded in a bunch of gravel, you won't necessarily get as much hydro erosion. But the, but pipe joints that are open to the ground can also cause hydro erosion to the road bed above it, and cause this, the the road uh, to settle as well. So you've also got that there too to potentially be concerned about. All right, so. I put an X marking, we're sitting very close to where the mailbox is at, right about, right about in the middle of the sidewalk. I'm getting around six foot four to six foot seven inches deep there. So from that point out to where the line terminates at the main, I mean, when you, when you look at the combination of roots and bellies there, um, and, and bellies again, like I was just saying, are a different animal in plastic pipe generally than they are in concrete. If this were an all plastic sewer line, and you were to subtract the roots from the equation, the belly would be extremely unconcerning. At, at that distance from the house, a, a, a belly of that size, it's almost impossible to cause a blockage in a backup. You would have to be trying to block your sewer line, honestly, to get to that point. And you've got some schmaltz and debris right here. It's making it really hard to see You've got some little stringy things poking out of some of this debris here, which concerns me. Some of that does indeed look like human hair. These transition joints, anytime you have a plastic meeting concrete, um, any, any pipe material change, especially with a diameter change on top of it, are by far your most prone, prone joints to root intrusions occurring. It's hard to tell there though, because you've got some gunk in the flow line they could be sitting over the top of things, covering them up. That right there looks much more like human hair than it does roots, the way that they're displaying themselves. Roots don't often fold over on themselves like that. They have a lot more rigidity to them. By and large, what that looks more like is some debris with some hair caught in it. Um, but it's hard to, it's, it's a hard one to say without being able to get that all flushed out of there. You know, it, my, my two cents on this is, you know, all the pipe from this point going back to the, to the houses, all the plastic pipe, all of that stuff appears to be intact relatively clean, especially for its length, and has, and has very minimal amounts of standing water, uh, especially when you consider the length this thing is. As far as the concrete pipe goes though, you've got bellies that I'm concerned, though some of those joints out there may very well be open to the ground. Um, you might have something going on here at the transition joint, possibly roots, um, but a lot of the gunk, those little stringy things were sticking out of looked like they were movable and mobile, so it could just be some gunk with, with, a, with hair caught in it. Um, that's a harder one to say there without getting the line flushed out. But the, the concrete pipe is the bigger concern here. It, it's the structural integrity of it. Um, and as it sits, as far as flow goes, um, I'm not terribly concerned about flow as it sits right now with the standing water you've got there. I'm more concerned about the structural integrity of the line and, and whether or not some of those joints there are opened up to the ground and whether you're gonna have a progressive scenario or not. So what I would recommend here um, from that standpoint is updating the concrete pipe. If no repairs are done, I would recommend keeping an eye on it, rescoping periodically to monitor that section of pipe. Um, it's an awkward spot to, I mean, to, to do a repair. If you could trenchlessly do it, that would be ideal. 
Um, if you could cure an epoxy liner in that standing water, I would certainly be uh, going after that type of repair process versus digging. Because um, you're, you're looking at, I mean, a lot of traffic control out here. It's a, it's a main artery roadway. So from a flow standpoint, the line has adequate flow to the main lateral connection. The roots as they sit right now are not doing really anything to affect functionality. Um, I'm recommending a re uh, update to the concrete, mostly from the, just the, the age and condition and the settling and often what, what comes in when you have settling like that in concrete pipe. Plastic pipe can settle to an incredible extent without the joints opening to the ground. It's just different concrete pipe it's more concerning you're going to have a progression take place there how quickly that takes place is impossible to know um, that that belly there may have formed over the course of 20 years it might have bellied out from from inception that, that's what we don't know so anyway if you do get repairs done i highly recommend rescoping the line i would if you can forward the video onto an epoxy liner company to see if they think they can cure the epoxy in the standing water out there if they can harden the epoxy that's what i would be doing all day long versus digging um, at the distance you're at here in total from the main house, I mean those bellies are, are, you know, you're talking 150 feet away from the home. By the time you put a liner in there, I mean the standing water is already not doing hardly anything to affect functionality in a rougher concrete line. If you have a smooth, smooth as glass pipe liner or, or a liner inside there, the bellies become essentially insignificant, especially when you're talking being 150 feet out from the house. Those are bellies that you would have to try and block. You'd have to be flushing paper towels and all kinds of nonsense like that down there to ever get close to that point.